Hi everyone and welcome to this Valkyrie Sound tutorial. In this tutorial we'll set up a fuel system with the relevant radio chatter for low and critical fuel. We'll also create a simple setup that plays an engine sound if our ship is moving. I showed you all the list of sounds I'd created in part 3. I have two sections here for fuel low and fuel critical. Both feed into a switch up here and both are listed in the player states enumerator. So in this tutorial, as in the last one, we're going to apply an attenuation effect to the engine sound, and these are the values here. So to create our engine sound, once you've downloaded the sound linked below, if you click and drag that into the content browser, and then you want to right click on that sound and hit create cue. I've called mine SC for sound cue fighter engines, and open that up, you want to set the wave itself to looping. I've got a modulator in here which is going to change the pitch but keep the volume fixed. So that's going to change it between 0.8 and 1.1, volume set to 1. And on the left hand details panel here, I've increased the volume multiplier from the default 0.75 to 2. And if we scroll down, you can see that I've applied the attenuation setting to this sound cue. So we can drop down and we just select the one that we want from there. Once you've done that, hit the magnifying glass, that's going to take you to where the sound is, and then you want to pick that up and drag it into your player character and stick it in the components section on the upper left here. And this is mine here. And then we want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and untick auto activate. We don't want that sound to play when the character spawns, so make sure that's unticked. Now we'll set up our engine sound so that it plays only when the ship is moving, and it'll stop when the ship stops. So first of all, create a custom event by right clicking and then typing in custom. I've called mine play engine audio. I've then rooted that to a branch node and into the branch node I've got a greater than node. Let's pull off and this is the float greater than float. Low value is going to stay at zero. The upper value is going to go with the vector length and then that is going to be connected to the get velocity node. And that's going to get the speed of our actor. It's going to tell us, is the character moving? If they are moving, we're going to add a do once node, and then we're going to fade in the sound. To do that, the easiest way is just drag in the asset, drag in the audio component. From there, we want fade in, and we want to set the fade in duration to 0.5. And that's the end of that line. From the false output of the branch, we're going to do the same again, but this time a fade out node again with the duration of 0.5. Then we'll add a stop delayed node. Again, easiest way is just to peel off from the audio component and set that to the same delay time, 0.5. That means the sound's gonna fade out. It's gonna take half a second to do that. After that, it's gonna be stopped and the execution output of that pin goes to the reset input of the do once pin. So when the ship starts moving again, the sound is going to fade in again. And that's it for that section. The last thing that we need to do is go up to wherever you have your event tick. So this is my event tick here. And scrolling along, we've got all of the different functions that we've got assigned to that. This is just one of the ways that you can set things out. And then we have the play engine audio attached to that list. The fuel system will consume fuel so long as the ship is moving. We'll slow the ship when fuel is low and we'll stop the ship when fuel runs out completely. We'll trigger audio for low and critical fuel states. We'll trigger chatter sounds for those. First of all, let's create our variables. We're going to need five floats for this one. So we have fuel consumption rate, and I've set the default for that one as 0.1. We have fuel with a default of 100. We have max fuel, again with a default of 100. Fuel critical. This is the value at which point we're going to trigger that fuel critical sound, and that's going to be 10, or 10%, 10 this is out of 100, and fuel low, that's going to come in at 30%. So we need a call from the ship saying, uh, we're running out of fuel when the fuel is that level. Let's do the refueling part because it's by far the easiest. So you can use any key you like, right click and, and type in key B, and then I put R for the R letter. And then I've added that to the fuel variable as a set. 
So drag that in, set, and I've just set it back to its original value, its default value of 100. Next, we're going to add another custom event. And as you can see, I've called this one fuel consumption. From there, add a sequence node. And from the top line, we want to add a delay node, the delay of 0.1. It's basically every 0.1 seconds, we are going to consume some fuel. To that, we're going to add a branch node. And again, we're going to use that calculation we used earlier. We're going to check if the ship is moving. So get velocity of the actor. Velocity length, is it greater than zero? If it is, we're going to modify the fuel. This is a new function that we're going to create. So if I open that up, so we have our inputs section here. On the right over here, where that's selected, add in a float value. I've called this fuel to subtract. And then we're going to grab in the fuel variable as a get. And from that, we're going to deduct the fuel to subtract. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the fuel consumption rate, 0.1, every 0.1 seconds, and deduct that from the current fuel value. That then is going to go to a, a clamp float, which is this one. Don't know why it doesn't go for that one automatically, but it's that one there. The bin value is, of course, going to be zero, and plug max fuel into the max. And finally, we want to drag in fuel as a set node and link it up to the return value of that clamp. It's basically, I'm sure you already know this, but that's basically going to stop us from going into a negative value and having negative fuel. So, once you've created that function, we're going to drag that in, hook that up to the true output of the branch node, and get our fuel consumption variable, and hook that up to the fuel to subtract float input. Next, so this is going to check, is the fuel equal to zero? If it is, we're going to set the max warp speed of the ship to zero. So we've done that by dragging in a reference to the character movement and max walk speed as a set, and we've set that to zero. And that's because, if we have a look here, you'll see that I'm actually using the mannequin to power the ship. So there we are. So that is the trick here to getting a hover ship. So we're setting the character movement, the max walk speed to zero when fuel is is out. And also optional is reducing the speed when the fuel is below a certain threshold. So I've put when the fuel is below 25. So again, get fuel less than float. If it's less than 25, then we are going to set the max walk speed to a third. This finterp, the float interpolation node, is going to gradually reduce that speed. So we have the delta time reference. That is plugged into the delta time input of the finterp node. We've got our current value, which is the current max speed, the default, 675. The target, the 225. And then the interpolation speed of 2. That's basically how quickly we're going to reduce the speed from 675 to 225. Now, obviously, there's a lot more that you could do with this. We aren't restricted to just being able to drive audio using this data. We can generate other behavior as well. So with that bit set up, it's now time to look at the audio. So from our fuel consumption section here, from the second sequence pin, if you drag out and create a branch node, what we're going to do here in this section is we're going to check what the fuel value is. And when it meets the criteria of being low or critical, we're going to get the appropriate sound using our enum the enum player state over here. So this is going to be reflected in the player states section of our character blueprint, uh, something that we set up in the third video. And we're going to include functionality to fall back to the ambient chatter once the, the comment about the fuel status has been made. From the branch that we've just made, we're going to add a no node. So this is saying, the top one that we want to create is we want to drag in our fuel as a get and our fuel critical. So what the comparison here is, is the fuel value less than our fuel critical value, or is it equal to it? Less or equal to it. That goes into the upper input of the null node. For our lower setup here, we're comparing the fuel value to the fuel lower value. Is that equal to or less, is fuel equal to or less than fuel low? And that goes into the null node as well. From the false output of that branch, we're going to add another branch, 
and this one is going to be hooked up to the fuel critical section and then the final branch from the false output of that one and obviously that one's connected to the fuel low so if you work on the the middle one here from the true output we want to add a do once node and from there we're going to pull out and create a new custom event called reset fuel one once you have that you're then going to add this into the true output of the first branch and then if you scroll along from the do once node we're going to add our enum player state so that is just dragging that in as a set and from the drop down we're going to select fuel critical and then we're going to add in a delay node so we're going to drag in a reference to the the player chatter component which we created in the earlier video and then we're going to get sound oops get downed get sound which is the blue hoop one and and then get duration that's going to give us the, the length of the longest wave within this sound queue. And then we're going to multiply that by two and hook that up to the duration input of the delay node. The reason that I've doubled this is because I found that just playing once wasn't enough for our player state section earlier up at top to run through a sound and catch this one. It wasn't latching on quickly enough. So I've had to lengthen out how long we wait before we trigger another sound to make sure that this sound here is actually added in to the system so that it plays. And once this has happened, once that's happened, because it will happen within twice the length of the longest part of the sound queue, that means we can go on to reset it as we do here in this step. So we're going to add another do once node. We're going to add another custom event into the reset pane of that node. And then we're going to set the enum player state again, but this time back to ambient. And we'll come back to these two reset nodes in a moment. So let's get out all the way along to the beginning again. And from the final branch node, we're going to basically just copy more or less the same thing. Another do once node, this time with its own custom event for the reset. For this one, we're going to set that fuel low, corresponding to the, the input that we have here, to the value that we have there. Same setup for the delay. Another do once node, this time with a custom event called reset fuel 4. And we're going to set the ambient here. And this is where we're going to add in those references to reset fuel 3 and 4 and reset fuel 2. And what they basically do is they allow us to refuel the ship and then to encounter the same situation again. So if the ship was fueled, dropped to critical level, triggered that critical audio sound and the low one before it, then refueled, when it went out again and it started to lose its fuel, it would then trigger the low fuel again. So it's just about creating a, a, a situation where we can re-trigger events, and that's what these do once resets are doing. And that's it for this section as well. So the last thing that we need to do is just make sure that the fuel consumption custom event is also referenced in the event tick function at top. And that's it. We can now compile this and go and test it out. Atmospheric composition. Unbreathable. We've used a, a very simple engine sound in this tutorial, very basic. For a more in-depth engine sound, keep an eye out and an ear for a future tutorial on creating an adaptive engine sound very similar to the ones found in Wipeout, possibly my most favourite racing game. Uh, we're, uh, out of fuel. This is the end of the Battle Chatter section of this mini-series, and I hope you found it really useful. Take care, keep making your own projects, and as always, Thank you for watching.